My next guest started his career by playing the French horn and uh, managed to parlay the French horn into a, a funny, uh, strange comic profession, uh, part of which is reviewing movies, incidentally. Will you welcome a really funny man, Mr. Milton Kamen. <laughs> I've been hearing things about you and a dog. Oh, no. Oh, I, that was a... What's uh, a... No, I, I wasn't oh. fooling around with a dog. I'm not a kid. No, uh, I... Uh, You're working... You worked with a dog. Or, yeah, no, yeah. a number or of I, dogs. I didn't mean to. No, uh, it was uh, McMillan uh, out in Hollywood. They, uh, it was a, uh, a series that uh, Rock Hudson is doing called McMillan and Wife. Uh -huh. And uh, he plays the husband, and Susan St. James plays the wife. And... Uh, so this is, a, I was guest starring, and they had um, a sequence. It was like a murder mystery, but comedy. Mm -hmm. And they had a number of dogs there, oh, about 100 dogs. And when you see the job, this Barry Shear was a director, of how to handle these dogs, and you realize that when you see how it's done behind the screens, that not all dogs are so hot. They're not? These were terrible actors. He told them everything, exactly what to do, and they <laughs> didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he went Tell crazy, him. you know, because these dogs yeah. were brought in. You know, the owners yeah. came with them, St. Bernard's, that could grab a man's leg and hold it. And they did it all during rehearsal. Came to camera, wouldn't do it. Just sat oh. like that, you know, because maybe they need something to drink or something. But, and then there was, but the, the funniest thing, and it held up production, cost thousands of dollars. They brought in a police dog. It had nothing to do with the other dogs. This dog was a special police dog that was going to jump on the fellow, yeah. like, like that. Yeah. And the police dog was walking around. He wouldn't even talk to the other dogs, you know, like that, you know. <laughs> and what happened was that when the time came and pandemonium broke loose and everything went wild, the police dog got scared. <laughs> I'd never seen that. We all felt bad. <laughs> the dog like that. Yeah, he was a faker. <laughs> I don't know how he got into the party. He probably knew somebody. I don't know. <laughs> yes. But the... Uh, to, to, to whom you know when you're a dog. <laughs> oh, not like that. Even for an actor. <laughs> yeah. But I was thinking I couldn't help uh, when I was listening to Bob Feller and Vita Blue, you know, thinking of my own life when I was a French horn player, when uh, Bob Feller was very famous then, when I started playing horn, he was playing ball. And they talk about their arm, you yeah. know, how that is. They worry about the arm. And when you're a French horn player, you worry about your lip. Sure. Your oh, lip, your boy. Your lip goes, what can you do? You're finished. And yeah. every day you worry about your lip. What do you you know, they used to have a book even written by Big Spiderbeck. He wouldn't kiss a girl because he was afraid it would weaken his lip. You know. Seriously? Yeah, well, some guys get crazy. You have camphor, you put camphor on it, and yeah. you do like that, you know. How's my lip? How's my lip? And it's a crazy life with a lip hanging over your head all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you so know? Yeah. But by the way, uh, you know, I, while I've been out on the coast, I, I did go see a number of movies that did have to do with, it seems something interesting has happened. I went to see a movie called uh, Carnal Knowledge. Oh, I'm dying to see that. Yeah, well, don't run. It's all right. But, <laughs> I, uh, what? It's okay. It's, an, it's well done. It's well made yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. But it's, it, it, and the funny thing is that in Love Story, Love Story also took place in the same area, up in Massachusetts. And Love yeah. Story dealt with two colleges, Harvard and Radcliffe. Remember the girl came from Radcliffe, he came from Harvard, because mm -hmm. whatever reason he wanted to go there. And, <laughs> and the other movie, this movie here, the one with uh, uh, Nicholson and... Uh, Candy Bergen. And Candy Bergen, yes. And she goes to Smith, and they go to Amherst. And, they, and the amazing thing to me, I never went to those schools, naturally, and the amazing thing to me was they, they told the same dirty stories there as we told on the block, you know, <laughs> up in Amherst, imagine that. Yeah. And, uh, and it, <laughs> yes, but they, and they, well, they never done anything about Yale yet, have they? I don't think there's, there, well, they, they made a movie about Cole Porter, but that That's was some right. time back. That was a long time yeah. ago. But this movie is, is worth seeing in a certain way. Uh, it shows how fellas find out about girls, do you know? How do they? Oh, well, they tell each other, you know. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, uh, what's his name, the boy without uh, the, the folk singer? What's his name? Garfunkel. Garfunkel. Oh, Garfunkel, yeah. He's the yeah. fella. He finds out. He goes out, and the other fella says, did you kiss her? Why don't you kiss her? He never kissed anybody himself, you know. Yeah. And then he comes back and says, I kissed her. And the other guy says, why don't you go further? And he goes further. Garfunkel doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> and, and, and Candy Bergen is shocked because he doesn't look like that kind of fella, and he doesn't. Yeah. But he does all those things, and finally she gives in, and it's a joke. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and, uh, mean? and and then uh, Nicholson runs, and then it shows their life development, you know, how they go on through life, different yeah. girls always checking up and back. And finally, this Nicholson runs into this girl, uh, Anne Margaret. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who we all know. Yeah. And, uh, and she looks great in the movie, a little, she put on a little weight and looks good. 
And uh, he starts fooling around with her. And it seems that the theme of the movie, every time they have fun with the girls, they, uh, they get despondent. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah, they lose heart. Like, uh, I didn't know she was that kind of girl. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Every girl's that kind of girl. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, anyhow, well, and that's the way the movie ends in a very despondent note. Yeah. But I wanted to bring out, you're going to have a break, but yeah. the, the similarity between what's happened because of these kind of movies and why now they've gone to Hellstrom Chronicle. There's a reason. Will you now, tell that when we come Oh, back? I'm going to tell everything. Oh. <laughs> there we are. The Hellstrom Chronicle is a fascinating thing. Uh, yeah, that's the one with the insects. The insects, uh, great. I saw but some of it here on the show. Yes, it's, it's a tremendous movie. Yeah. But here's what happened. Because of movies like uh, Carnal Knowledge, yeah. uh, where we've seen a number of these kind of movies where in detail they show you everything. You know, years ago the movies ended, they kissed, and that's the end, right? And they live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. Now they begin with that kiss. Yeah. <laughs> And then they go into detail. A camera comes in, they show everything. Tooth, eyes, I was kissing, overlapping lips, and this and that. And sometimes they fill the whole screen with a lip. You get scared, you know, like, ah! You know, and then you realize, oh, it's just a candy burden of somebody that you know. Yeah. But it's much bigger than life, you know. And so when they indulge, it's like a tremendous indulgence, you know. Ah! And they follow them into the bedroom, into the bed, under the sheets, and they got cameras going, and you, you see everything. And as a result, People, they've done a number of these movies and they realize people are getting bored. So the movie industry is smart. Yeah. They said, we'll do the same thing with insects. <laughs> and now they have, like the Hellstrom Chronicle, it shows you termites, you know, who built a tremendous thing five, six uh, uh, feet high. They really oh, uh, yeah. work like crazy, the termites. And so what happened is, and, and the cameras, I don't know how they did it, little cameras they must have had incredible. <laughs> Underneath, inside, where you can watch the termites doing their busy working and also yeah. mating, as they do. They show that? Oh, boy, do they show that. Do you know that, they, that the queen termite, a, yeah. a termite is about that big. In relation to that, Dick, listen to this, because yeah. it's the truth. Yeah. I saw it in the movies. And the queen, the queen termite is that big, like that. So you know they have a, about, a, you know, about 2,000 mating her at the same time, because that's all she does. She doesn't do nothing but lay eggs and have pleasure. That's her, her That's her life. Her it's thing. completely advanced of women's lib, way past anything we've ever seen. Yeah. And what happens is that, but the point is this, that the cameras are there watching everything, and the termites are busy, you know, running around laughing, having a good time, and all of a sudden they turn around, they see that, they go berserk. They're not like people, they have pride. And they don't want, do you know, when you see all the 10 legs running, what are they looking? Get out of here, get out of here, you know? They're trying to paste up the thing where the camera is to cover it up. You should watch them, you know, the queen bee is looking, what is that? What is that, you know? Yeah. That's the queen termite. But the queen uh -huh. bee is also the uh, same thing, very, very large. And, uh -huh. the, and the termites are, uh, they're tremendous. They do, it, uh, oh my God, they do all kinds of things and they're programmed, you know, and they work like crazy. And then it mm -hmm. shows you the ants the same way, but, a lot of, I saw something, uh, running with the ants. You know, they can carry about 50 times anything bigger than themselves. Oh, yeah, know? it's amazing. Yeah, but not all of them do it. You know? They have fakers among them. <laughs> they're, they're running wrong. One is running, they're all running and carrying and carrying and carrying. And you see other ants running alongside carrying nothing. <laughs> but running along and breathing, yeah, yeah, I'm carrying, I'm carrying. They're not doing anything at all. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. And if the, uh, then it shows you ants that in Africa, that have a certain kind of ant that attacks for no reason at all. They're blind, but they know where they're going. The driver ants, or whatever. Yeah, is that what driver ants, that's right. right. Blind, but they know exactly where they're going. It's very much similar to the administration. And <laughs> they... <laughs> I got it, okay. So anyhow, no, from now on, we're going to have plenty of money, but it's not going to be worth anything. So anyhow. <laughs> Something. Something. <laughs> anyhow. I like to put on a show, after all. Yeah. Have a buck. No, have a buck. It's the same thing. <laughs> so what happens? Now these ants go crazy. They eat up everything and they live everything in the sight. And it's a terrific thing. I like that part. And, but the thing is that the, uh, he keeps saying throughout the movie mm -hmm. that the insects are going to take over the world because they're more prepared than we are. Yeah. That no matter what happens, they'll inherit it because it shows like, for instance, an atom bomb went off at one point and it shows you that the only thing that survived were insects, yeah. that they'll survive. And they said, so animals and insects will survive and come, because they're superior to human beings. And I'm not a scientist, but it isn't true. It isn't necessarily true. I was, I, I was, watch, I was behind a tree in Central, well, that's pri private. Anyhow, I, I was in Central Park, and I saw a flying grasshopper, took off, flew great. 
Sure. I'm not criticizing that part. But when a grasshopper landed, it tripped. <laughs> and I laughed. I said, not such perfect instincts. You know, <laughs> you I, why do I care about a, uh, about a grasshopper? It flew. And did you ever hear, for instance, they say that their instincts are perfect. Not true. Yeah. Did you ever hear about tigers? They say all tigers walk softly in the jungle. Yeah. It's not true. Not all tigers. Yeah. Some tigers don't know what they're doing in the jungle. <laughs> they're maladjusted. They have neurotic tigers. Their faces are all broken out, you know. <laughs> and, when they, and when they hunt, you know, they, they, uh, every, they make noise. <laughs> You know, and all the animals run from them and they run to the other tigers and say, how do, how do you walk soft? And the other tigers say, well, you can't acquire that. <laughs> they treat you each other taught like me most of the things I know about animals. Right. I love the thing about seagulls. The reason they go, ah, ah, is they're afraid of heights and they're looking down going, ah. That's right. 